guys, I'm Mel from Ford and Amps, and this is part two to using guitar plugins live automation. <laughs> Okay, so I understand that that was a drastic example, but you can pull it off using automation in a DAW. I'm aware about sending MIDI signals into your plugin in order to change certain parameters, but I do prefer using automation in this instance because I found that it's allowed me to be a little bit more creative and also has allowed me to be a bit more musical in a lot of instances. I understand doing it this way is a bit more CPU intensive, but if you have a computer that can pull it off, you can get some great results. Because this tutorial is going over automation using a DAW, it's going to vary depending on what DAW you're using, but each principle should translate through each DAW. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change amp heads using different plugins. I'm also going to show you how to change amp heads within the plugin, adjust your gate sensitivity depending on what part of the song you're in, changing your delay timing depending on how musical it needs to be in a certain aspect, using EQ and filtering to emphasize certain transitional elements and cutting guitar volume for places you need to be absolutely silent in a musical setting or in a live scenario. In the back half of the video, I'll be going over advanced concepts like stutter gates or musical gates or glitches. I'll also explain how to get creative and rhythmic with certain production effects just to show you the power of a DAW combined with the guitar plugin. And I'll also go over turning off the cab sim to create cool, synthy, jarring guitar effects. All right, so enough talk, let's jump into the computer. So I'm gonna show you how to automate in my DAW. So step one, I'm gonna grab my plugin for Cali and then drag it to a new lane. So there are many different ways to automate in different DAWs, but for Studio One, you would basically just press A and then it brings you to the automation lane. So I'm gonna title this track Example be sure to title everything you do in an automation session or else it's going to get very jumbled and very disorganized and really hard to find what parameter you want to automate when you get into very diverse or very complicated session. So for instance, I'm titling this one example one and I'm going to actually press T and add a lane of automation. I'm going to call this amp switcher. This lane of automation will switch my amps from OD1, OD2 to clean. So in order to finalize this automation lane, I have to actually bind it to a parameter. So in doing that, I have to add or remove a lane of automation or a parameter to the track and then find example one, go in my inserts and then find the lane or the parameter that I want to automate. So the parameter that I want to automate in the Neural DSP plugin is called amp type. So it's right here. I'm going to add it and then click close. Then now you can see that I can add a point of automation by clicking on the line of automation. And then that will show me what parameters I'm switching at what points of automation. So on uh, bar two, I want it to be clean to bar three and I want it to get overdriven to OD one on bar three. So without, without listening to anything, with just writing the automation, let's see. So you can see that it switches from bar two to bar three, depending on the point of automation. And you can also see that I set the parameter to read. If you set it to write, now you can kind of click on and it will switch. I particularly don't use right touch or latch. I just draw the automations in by points because I find that to be the most precise method to do so. I find that using touch, latch, or right tends to be a bit unprecise for my taste because it kind of rides and depends on uh, my mouse or my other peripherals that I'm pushing into the DAW, like uh, my MIDI controllers and such. So I just prefer to draw everything in as it allows me to get everything precisely on time and on the beat. So to do this, I click read, and you should find this in every DAW. Uh, read means that your plugin will read the line of automation and will impose those parameters on your plugin. By moving uh, th this point of automation, I can see that uh, it switches my amp from OD2 to OD1 on the very top. On bar two, I'm going to want it to be clean. On bar three, I'm going to want it to be on OD2. 
and on bar four, I'm going to want it to be on OD one. You can see that just by drawing point by point, you get a uh, kind of this raised line per se, or a, a diagonal line. In my use case, I want stair steps just in case uh, it misreads information. So I'm going to want it to be very precise. I'm going to draw a point of automation in between to uh, just kind of give me a hard line. So that way I have a stair step of automation rather than a gradual change in values. Those gradual changes in values will depend on what parameter you're in. So if for instance, you're in a volume knob and you're automating a volume knob, you're not going to want to use a diagonal line because it'll do this. You're going to want to use a stair step or an instant point of change. So like this. And that will allow you to more precisely hit the points, unless you want to do a gradual volume swell, in which case you can use a diagonal line. And my DAW allows me to use uh, like parabolic changes or gradual fade-ins rather than just a straight diagonal line. Those tend to sound a little bit weird. So once you've gotten to the point where you've drawn the automation that you want your plugin to perform with you, you can then set, make sure it's set to read and then run the automation, in which case you can see, in which case you can see that it is changing per bar right here. So as you can see, when I feed it a guitar signal, it'll change at the designated bars. So you can do this with many different parameters in the Neural DSP plugin. Uh, all of which you can access through the automation. You can access everything from the pedals, independent knob positions to uh, the switches on the amp, uh, to even the, the cabinet mic phase, if you really wanted to. So that's the basics for neural DSP automation in a DAW setting in my DAW Studio One. But like I said, it's going to vary from DAW to DAW. So if you're gonna be using Cubase, Logic, to Pro Tools, it's going to change, but you can find basics in automation everywhere on the internet. So in this phase of the tutorial, I'm going to be going over basic parameter changes and then touch on some advanced things that I like to do with my band live. So I'm gonna start off with changing amp sims. So I found that switching between two amp sims is the easiest and simplest way to go from tone to tone in a DAW. It's a little bit more CPU intensive, but if you have a computer that can handle it, it's a great way of doing so. So in my case, I have from measure three to five, the Kali clean tone, and then at measure five to seven, a nameless high gain setting. So what I did was I told my DAW to bypass these parameters by going in inserts, finding it, and then uh, adding bypass to those parameters. Those should be a basic function in your DAW. So I told the nameless to bypass from channel three to five, and then I told it to become active from five to seven. And I did the same thing by telling Kali to bypass from five to seven. So here's an example. So if you want to change amp heads within a plugin, first you need to select the automation within your DAW. So we're going to go back to add or remove parameters in uh, the line of automation, and then we're going to find change amp type and add that to my lane of automation. So if you're going to switch from amp head to amp head in the Fortin Cali suite or any neural DSP plugin for that matter, you, you'll find that when you switch uh, certain parameters and settings, they will retain that information when you switch back and forth. So you can actually set up like a pretty sweet clean tone and then you can set your own overdrive settings and you can set your own lead settings depending on uh, what you want. That doesn't retain, uh, those channels don't retain on the pedals, but uh, you can you can automate those as you go. So for instance, 
I have a clean tone set up to go for measure four to five, an overdriven tone on OD2 from five to six, and another higher gain tone from six to seven. And you can see that example here. I know that changing gate sensitivity is super important, especially when you're going from lead to rhythm uh, to going from very loose legato sections or to very tight rhythmic sections. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to drag a new plugin in here, and then we're going to go to add and remove automation parameters. And then we're going to jump into the Zool's threshold. I'm going to close it after it's added, and then we're going to view it. So I like to have, when I'm tapping and doing very leady sections of songs, I like to have uh, my Zool very loose. And then uh, I like to have it very tight when I'm doing very rhythmic sections. So you can actually add points of automation here and here, and uh, just dragging it shows you where it would be in the parameter, and you can see that move and you can see that move here. So I'm gonna have it uh, tight here. Click on uh, my points of automation here. Go over here and then uh, actually look at it and then drag up. So I'm gonna have it a bit tighter here. I'm actually gonna go all the way just because I'm gonna do a pretty aggressive uh, picking. So that's gonna penetrate through the noise gate. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So there you go, that's how you would adjust gate sensitivity uh, depending on uh, the point you have in the song. Moving on to delay timing. So just letting you know in advance, if you automate the time parameter in most delay pedals, um, it's going to give you a weird pitch shifting effect. And that's not necessarily good or musical unless you're trying to go for that specific sound. So what I did is I opened two sections of Corey Wong and then I isolated the delay by uh, turning off or disabling all the other parameters. Then I told my DAW to automate bypassing between the two delays. So I have a bypass on and off in these two sections and this is what uh, it does. So in order to do that, you're going to need to add a lane of automation to bypass for each delay. And you're going to basically do the same thing we did for changing amp sims. You're going to activate one delay and bypass it when the other delay is happening, like so. So for instance, I drew a line of automation from measure one to three, telling delay one, my dotted eighth note delay to bypass until it hits measure three, and in which case it would then activate and bypass the second delay, which is my quarter note delay. All right, so you'll kind of notice by now at this point is that I like to set certain plugins to just turn on and off just like how we would uh, with a pedal board. We would step on the pedal at a certain point in the song and that would turn on or off certain parameters in our pedal board. So how I handle EQ and filtering is pretty much the same thing. So uh, since I had the archetype Corey Wong already up, I basically had uh, an EQ set to remove just the highs and lows. And then I have that set to bypass at measure five. So what that'll do is I'll go from this very filtered, kind of nasally, uh, telephony sounding guitar tone to uh, a full tone. And I've just done the same strategy that I've done for every parameter so far, which is bypassing and then activating at a certain point. So right now I have it 
set to ap- set active for measures three to five during uh, my playtime, and then I have it set to bypass for measures five to seven. And you can do that the same way you've done with every parameter so far. I like to use EQ and filtering for certain transitions within songs. Uh, that way it adds a little bit more impact, but uh, what's it called? My bandmates tend to like playing through the parts rather than having it backtracked. And for consistency and sound sake, it does sound a bit more fuller on stage when we do this. So that's why we automated our filtered sounds rather than uh, having them backtrack. As you guys may or may not know, a certain breakdown sections for many live bands are dead quiet or very, very on point. Um, those bands sometimes automate volume cuts uh, within their pauses. And how I do that is uh, actually a little bit different. Uh, I actually bring my DAWs gate and I just set the threshold all the way up and I set my reduction as much as I possibly can and I set it after my amp sim. So you can see my amp sim is here, and then I have my gate after it with the threshold and the reduction range cranked. And then I have that, uh, you guessed it, bypassing and activating during certain sections. You can do that the same way using the gate from your DAW. So I'm going to show you how to find those parameters really quickly. So I'm going to drop the gate on top of uh, the volume cut track that I have. And then uh, that would be gate 5. I'm going to hit A to hit my automation lanes, and then I'm going to add a lane of automation for volume cut inserts. That's gate five, and then I'm going to uh, just double click the bypass parameter, and that adds uh, a teal lane of automation, which I can use to uh, turn the bypass on and off. So uh, sometimes people would go, why don't you just use uh, the noise gate? Well, noise gates are kind of sensitive. And even if you crank some noise gates, um, if you're moving around or if you're really hyped at a show and it really needs to be dead silent, it doesn't have to be a musical part. Like say, if everything's supposed to be silent for atmosphere or silent after the song is over, and uh, your guitarist so happens to be going crazy in the crowd or just not in the right place. This is a foolproof way to have their amp completely shut off. So I'm going to show you what it sounds like with the volume cuts here. So you can use that technique that I showed you for volume cuts in specific places in a rhythmic way. And that would achieve that stuttered gating effect that you would hear in a lot of records. So to do that, all you would have to do is bypass instead of on and off in simple ways at certain sections, you can actually have it done musically. So I have it automating and bypassing musically like so. And here's what it sounds like. And like I said before, you're just using the same technique that we did for volume cuts in the previous section of this video. I like using these and doing these a lot for buildups or certain sections of songs like intros or certain parts where things dropped out and we need to isolate or add some hype. So what I did in this section of the song is I actually automated a high cut to scoop out all the information other than the low end and slowly, gradually increase and fill up and give a full guitar sound at the end of the section. And you can see here. So the yellow line of automation is what we were focused on here. So what you're going to want to do is grab your DAWs EQ, drag that in, and to do a filter, all I did was draw a high cut and then gradually bring it up. And in my DAW, certain plugins, you can instantly access certain parameters to automate. So I just right clicked 
edit automation and then that brought it and added it to a line in uh, my automation lane here. And then all that I did was drag it to zero and then I dragged the end of the section all the way up. And that resulted in this. And additionally, I added a little bump uh, to add some little sauce or resonance to uh, the EQ filter sweep. And uh, I had that ride along uh, my high cut. So what I did to do that is I right clicked edit automation and then I set my points here and here to follow the other high cut. If you want to get more creative with it, you can actually add the gate that I talked about earlier to add a little bit more spice. So what I did is I had the gate alternate uh, in 30 second notes between uh, certain sections of the part just to add a little bit more emphasis on certain parts and to stutter certain elements. So what that looks like is this. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to tackle very synth-like or very altered, odd guitar sounds. In this portion of the tutorial, I'm going to use uh, Archetype Gajira in conjunction with uh, Kali, and I'm going to be focusing on its pitch section. So in order to uh, automate just the pitch section of the Archetype Gajira, what I did was I turned everything off. by double clicking on uh, these pedal sections, got to the pitch section, uh, hit my track, went to add or remove uh, automation parameters. Then I went to archetype Gojira and then I found the pitch section, double click that, set it to active so I could automate it, hit close. And now I can turn it on and off. And all I did was activate both sections and turn them on. And then I basically automated both sections to turn on at uh, lane seven right here. And you can see that like so. This is probably the most complicated section of the tutorial. All I did essentially was combine and stack all the techniques that I've done previously in all of the sections and shown it off here. And in addition to that, I automated my guitar cabinet to turn off. Doing so got me these really harsh, really crazy overdriven tones uh, without all the harsh frequencies removed. So it sounds very harsh. It sounds very, uh, industrial, and it sounds very unnatural. In addition to that, I also automated the pitch pedal to go up and down during certain sections. So I also had the gate automated to spike during certain sections of the piece. And lastly, I just had all the effects come in at measure seven and my piece starts at three. So with all of these techniques combined, I was able to achieve this sound.
So with all of that put together and all of these techniques stacked, you should be able to control every parameter with your DAW and perform live without ever needing to touch a pedal board. And that makes things really easy. That way you can focus on your guitar playing and your performance rather than tap dancing on a pedal board. This is actually my favorite thing to do live and I abuse it a lot in a lot of live settings to really create a very unique sounding show experience for my listener. So with all of that said, here's what it sounds like in a mix. guys i hope you found this video helpful and i hope it gave you some ideas on how to use automation in your live set and if it did hit the thumbs up button ring the bell for notifications sub to the channel if you haven't already and leave a comment down below on what automation trick you're probably going to use the most again i'm mel from fortin amps and i'll see you on the next one